All right, everyone. We're gonna get going in uh, in just a moment. Um, so we finished up uh, week two now, meaning um, this is right, 21 days of meditation. We did week one, which was about attunement. Week two was where our heart-based practices, which a lot of people seem to be fans of. I really love the heart-based practices too. Um, today is the beginning of our final week of the this 21 day challenge and we'll be moving into uh, what I'm roughly terming expansion. And so these kinds of practices will be less uh, object focused uh, and allowing the mind to rest more in, in awareness itself, creativity or the space for creativity. Um, uh, open monitoring practices, uh, choiceless awareness practices. Um, we'll do some non-self inquiry. So looking at who who is the small sense of self that we often term as me or I um, and challenging that. And, and as we do, our sense of self becomes bigger. Uh, so we'll do that over uh, some of these days. Um, but today we're going to start with a, a, a basic uh, choiceless awareness practice, aka uh, open monitoring meditation. So I'll guide you through that. As always, you can uh, find a comfortable posture, whatever that might look like for you. I'm sitting, but you can be lying down, you could be standing. And I will, I'll ring the, ba um, the bells uh, five times, as we've been doing in past days. When I do, use that as the opportunity to anchor your attention uh, in one place to help stabilize the mind in the present moment. So if you haven't yet closed your eyes and you would like to, you can do so now. We'll take a deep breath together in through the nose. And slowly out through the mouth. We're going to invite areas of the body, the body as a whole, to start to relax a little bit more into this moment. 
And it's not to force the body to relax. And it's not even to privilege relaxation over tension, although relaxation is nice. But there is a lot of uh, subconscious gripping and fear responding that often manifests as tension in the body. And so as we do invite parts of the body to relax, it's a bit of a signal to the mind, the brain, that we're okay in this moment. We're safe. We don't need to brace ourselves. So maybe invite the jaw to soften. Let your face settle into its original face. Invite the shoulders and the neck to be at ease. hands and belly. And if you would like to place your hands anywhere on your body that make you feel more safe, sometimes a hand on the heart or two hands on the belly, Sometimes even just a hand around the neck region can feel safe. Just something that, that gives that soft animal of your body permission to rest. Knowing that whatever might be going on in your life right now or in your day right now, it's temporary. The feeling associated with it is temporary. Good and bad, positive and negative. This is it's just the nature of being human. When we're in it though, it feels very real and like it will be here forever. So we can give ourselves the space to experience whatever is here perhaps with the simple mantra, it's like this right now. As an objective awareness of the snapshot of your life, it's like this right now.
So many of the practices we've done involve focusing the attention on a particular point. It could be the breath, an area of the body, a phrase. Open monitoring meditation is slightly different in that we're not attending to any one experience, but rather we're settling into being, or what you might say, awareness itself. And so what does this mean? If you're sitting in a movie theater, and you could be watching one small part of the screen and really fix your attention there. One character, maybe. Or you could zoom out and you just have a sense of, oh, I'm sitting here and there's lots of things happening on the screen, coming and going. In choiceless awareness, we're, we're zooming out just watching whatever is moving through the screen of our consciousness. So just start by seeing if you can be aware of the different things moving through your awareness. And this can include anything, thoughts, sounds, emotions, sensations, visual images behind the eyelids. And you're looking at it all with curiosity. Not taking any of it too seriously or attaching too strongly to it. Instead, kind of marveling at all the different dimensions of your experience. So our awareness is as if it's stationary. And then all of these different experiences are moving through it. Sometimes they linger. But everything will change and shift and pass at some point. So one way to stay connected to the moving landscape of it all 
is to add a mental label to the experience as it arises. And the label is just simply whatever the experience is. So if your mind is thinking, you might label it thinking. If you notice a sound, you might label hearing. If you feel your breath, you might notice inhale, exhale. And so as we're resting in awareness, it might sound in your own mind like this. Hearing. Hearing. Scratchiness in my throat. Inhale. Ease. Inhale. Breath. Hearing. And so I'm just tracking whatever moves through my awareness with focus and precision, but fluidity. So try that out. And these mental labels are done in your own mind. They don't have to be out loud. In this practice, no one experience is privileged over the other. It all gets welcomed into awareness as it moves through. In the final moments of this meditation, we can make a shift from choiceless awareness practice. And I invite you to set an intention for the day.
you're ready, you can reorient yourself back into the space and eventually let the eyes open again. Thank you, everyone. And even, you know, now as the eyes are open, you can take in this experience with that same awareness, uh, noticing comments coming through, noticing what it's like to see in the change, changing landscape of seeing. Um, so this was, this was called open monitoring and or uh, choiceless awareness meditation practice. And uh, sometimes it can be tough in the beginning, which is why it's usually a practice introduced later on. Once we have a bit of stability in the mind, it can be tough. Uh, it can be easier to stabilize attention on something like the breath or a saying. It can be harder to stabilize the attention and awareness itself. Um, so we got we got a taste for the practice. As the practice deepens, experience arises and passes very rapidly, uh, sometimes so rapidly that you can't even label it anymore. And we're talking like, you know, if you're doing months of retreat practice or even a week of re like intensive meditation practice, whatever arises in your experience will just like boom, 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 boom. And the awareness is, is very sharp and it's catching it. Um, but sometimes the experience is just moving too fast for the mind to even uh, label it. Um, and that, that gives us an insight into the impermanent nature of experience, which is a, a liberating insight for the mind because it no longer takes experiences so serious, seriously. It's no longer grasping so tightly at the good experiences. It's no longer fighting and pushing the bad experiences. It meets the moment as it is with a little bit more acceptance and ease and grace uh, and, and knows through wisdom that this too will pass. We've all heard that this too shall pass, but it's one thing to know that cognitively and it's one thing to really demonstrate it to your mind in a way that it fully understands, um, in a way that actually liberates it. And that's the power of meditation is that it takes like what we might know as grandmother wisdom like all things are impermanent or um, just be present or something. Uh, and, and it actually implements it. it. It actually gets cultivated in the mind. Um, and the wisdom of those things get understood on a very deep level, not in a reading a textbook kind of way, uh, but an embodied knowing that just sort of happens organically. Um, and so choiceless awareness practice can be very powerful for that. And it can be used in conjunction with any other meditation practice. You could do you know, five minutes of breath practice and then five minutes of just opening up to awareness itself. That's often what I do. Uh, okay, so that's it for today. Um, happy Monday if you're tuning in from the States. Uh, remember, a lot of people have been asking about the retreat, the online retreat. So uh, we, do, we still do have some spaces left in that. Um, and that will be June 5th through 7th. And you can learn all about that online retreat, uh, coreymascara.com forward slash retreat. I'd love to work with you more closely there, especially if you're looking for a continuation of what we've started here. That will go deeper um, and, and more intimate. Um, yeah, we'd love to have you for that. I think that's it for now. All right, everyone, tag some friends. If you want to share this with people, it'll be up on YouTube. I apologize if there were any sound issues on Facebook. It seems like a couple people were struggling there. I'm not sure why that happens. It doesn't seem to be for everyone, and it doesn't seem to be happening on my end. Um, so, uh, so hopefully that doesn't happen again. All right. Um, thanks, everyone. I'll talk to you soon, and I'll put the link to the, uh, the retreat in the, the bio of this and also bio of Instagram. But you can just Google it for at coreymascara.com forward slash retreat. All right. Have a good day. Take care.